And Matthew, you and I talked on the phone yesterday. I want to get to all those points, but I do want to get your quick comment. Uh, what do you make of this Russia vaccine news? Do you think it could be real? Because where have they been on the vaccine spectrum, or is this literally completely coming out of left field? Morning, Brian. Thanks for having me back on. Um, so I don't know a lot, much, you know, probably about the same that you do, but um, there have been a few vaccines um, at various Russian institutes that have been in development. I think the two key questions that we'd probably like more information on and, and you'd like more information on is what, what clinical data do they have to support um, the vaccine? And then I think the second thing to remember is there are various ways that you could license a vaccine. Obviously, in the U.S., we've chosen to run large uh, patient studies to determine whether or not the vaccine is effective in terms of protecting people against symptomatic infection. But there are surrogate markers, such as antibody generation and some of the data you've seen from vaccines we've talked about already, which some countries have discussed about being sufficient to license the vaccine. So I think it would be important to know, you know, what criteria has been used to license the vaccine. Yeah, and I don't know if I, I've, I, I know nothing about global medical law. If there is any global medical law, are they under any obligation to share the data, share the vaccine, sell it? I'm sure they'd want to profit from it, I would assume. Do they have the capacity to ramp up all the the billions of doses. It's a lot of questions on that, Matthew. We're waiting for more information. In the meantime, with what we're tracking here, uh, you and I spoke and you told me yesterday you think we could have a, a U.S. or global working vaccine outside of this in the next few months. Who are the leading candidates right now for that? Sure. The, the leading candidates are three companies, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna. All have started some sort of phase three study. Pfizer and Moderna have started 30,000 patient phase threes in the U.S. AstraZeneca has uh, three studies outside the U.S. in the U.K., South Africa, and Brazil that they may be able to put together as a way to uh, ask for regulatory approval for their vaccine, and they should be starting a U.S. phase three soon. And then what about distribution and ramping up of doses? Whether or not we have a vaccine is one thing. Whether or not we can get it to a couple hundred million Americans, and the world is another. Yeah, and it's, and it's a good question. I think right now what we know is all of these vaccines are two doses, given about a month apart. Um, and most of the companies have talked about being in the tens up to 100 million doses available by the end of the year. So our best estimate right now is somewhere between 100 and 150 million um, people could get the vaccine by the end of the year, assuming all three are successful. And probably by the end of the first quarter, you would have enough, um, broadly speaking, for most Americans um, to be able to take the vaccine. Yeah, on the, and, and on the, the, the non-vaccine but antibody side, the, the treatment side, Regeneron and a few others still looking good? Yes, indeed. Um, most have moved past what's called the initial phase, which is where you know whether or not it's safe. Um, and now we're waiting for initial efficacy data. Most of these companies are running two kinds of studies. They're running a treatment study for people that are very sick and in the hospital. And then they're also running what's called a prophylactic study, um, which is for people who may be at high risk of exposure. So say a nurse that works in a hospital or a doctor treating patients where they could take it and maybe yeah. have a few months of protection. And we should know in September and whether I know or not they're effective. 